Hey guys, I'm Dave and welcome to the Thrall Gallery. Today, we're going to make a jig to cut keyhole slots. This jig can easily be made from a few pieces of scrap stock, but it still provides a great solution to any project that you want to hang easily. But before we jump into figuring out how to build this, I should probably talk about that. A few months ago, I tore a tendon in my left arm. And while we were hoping it would heal on its own, I ended up having to get surgery to get it done correctly. I'll probably be in the sling for a couple of months. But I already have a couple of videos ready to go, and this is one of them. So let's jump in and see how to assemble this jig and fondly remember what it's like to work with two arms. It's best to start with a base of quarter inch material. Here I'm using plywood, but MDF works as well. Your base should be about two inches wider than the base of your router and have enough length to allow for easy clamping. My router base was four and an eighth inches round, so I started with a piece that was roughly six inches by ten inches. I had some scrap poplar that was three quarters of an inch by seven eighths of an inch, and I cut it to ten inches long. The first side was glued and clamped to the plywood base, and then fastened in place with some 23 gauge pins. The second side was set in place, and I ran the router base back and forth until the fit was snug, but still moved easily. I marked the location with a pencil, and then came back with glue and clamps. I checked the fit again with the router base, then pin that piece in place as well. Any excess glue was removed from the interior of the jig. Before moving forward with the assembly, I put in a V-groove bit and cut a center line in the jig. The bit was just deep enough to give me a reference line later. I trimmed two more pieces of poplar to fit between those long pieces I had just attached. These would act as the stops for the router. The first was set about 5 and 3 eighths down from the upper edge of the jig. It's a random measurement, but I took it off the prototype jig and it seems to work fine. I lowered the router with the V-groove bit, set it in place against that stop, and tapped the router. This gives me the center starting point for my jig. My keyhole bit has a 3 eighths inch diameter so I chucked up a half inch Forstner bit in my drill press and drilled a through hole at the point I had just marked. I'd rather have this oversized so that the router bit won't hit the jig each time I use it. I transferred the center line of the two stops to the underside of the jig and then glued and clamped the outer stop in place. Now we can use that center line to drive in more 23 gauge pins. I did the same with the inner stop, except that I had transferred the wrong line to the underside of the jig. Luckily, I caught my mistake before driving the pins in the wrong location. The first cut on the jig creates the keyhole slot. Here, I clamped the jig to a scrap of plywood to cut the first pass. I set the bit so it was 3 eighths of an inch below the jig, plunged into the plywood, and ran the router up and back. I let the bit come to a complete stop before removing the router from the jig. If all goes well, your jig should look like this. To use this jig, set the center line of the jig along the center line of where you want your keyhole and adjust the height so it sits just where you want it. The first jig I built has a stop that can register off the top of your workpiece, but this one is designed to be used in the middle of the stock. To make the cut, clamp your jig in the correct location, plunge the bit down, move it forward and back, and then shut the router off. When the bit stops, remove the router and the jig, and you're left with a perfectly straight keyhole slot. Here you can see how the head of the screw fits into the large opening, then the piece drops down onto the slot, locking things in place. For this particular piece, I used two keyhole slots in line to secure my rack to the wall.
I took the time to trim off any of the excess plywood and sand the whole jig just to make it nice to use. This jig makes it quick and easy to cut keyhole slots. Whether you're making a small project that just needs a single slot in the center or something wider that requires a slot on either side. Or like the project I showed in this video, the two keyholes are one above the other. And if you've ever tried to cut one of these keyhole slots without a jig, you'll know how challenging it can be to keep them nice and straight. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. Was there something I could have done differently, easier, smarter? Drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear. As usual, in the description, I've listed some of the tools and materials I used in this video. And some of them have affiliate links. And if you purchase through those links, it does help keep the channel going. If you enjoyed this video, maybe give us a thumbs up and share it with friends. And if you haven't already, maybe it's time to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified each time I put out a new video. I think I know what's coming up next only because, well, I shot it before my surgery, but I'm going to keep it a secret. So until then, have a great day. Stay safe and take care. We'll see you soon.